The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, a fictional oral narrative penned by Ernest J. Gaines in 1971, presents the life story of Jane Pittman, an African-American woman who witnesses the transformative events from the Civil War era to the civil rights movement of the 1960s. The novel challenges conventional historical accounts by offering perspectives that have been excluded from textbooks. It begins with an introduction, where a schoolteacher persistently requests an interview with Miss Jane, set in rural Louisiana in 1962, with Jane being 110 years old, her protective companion. Mary Hodges questions the teacher's motives when he explains that he wants to use Jane's life story to teach history. Mary questions the adequacy of his textbooks, prompting Jane to agree to the interview, and she begins narrating her tale. In Book I, The War Years, Jane, known as Ticey as a young slave on a Louisiana plantation, encounters a Union officer near the end of the Civil War. He addresses her as Miss Jane, which leads her to reject her slave name and endure beatings from her mistress. As the war concludes, Jane joins a group of emancipated slaves traveling northward. They encounter patrollers, who were impoverished white individuals responsible for capturing runaway slaves. After the patrollers kill everyone except Jane and a young boy named Ned, Jane continues her journey with Ned. Although their precise location in relation to the North remains unclear, they receive assistance from various individuals, but never manage to cross the Louisiana border. In Book Two Reconstruction, Jane and Ned settle on a Louisiana plantation managed by Mr. Bone who was chosen by union representatives due to his support for northern political efforts. However, as the federal government's commitment to reconstruction wanes in the late 1870s, the plantation is returned to its original owner, Mr. Dye. Jane continues working in the fields, but conditions deteriorate, resembling slavery once again. Despite receiving meager wages, she ensures that Ned receives an education. As the era of Reconstruction comes to an end, racist organizations gain power, and racial tensions escalate in the South. While many former slaves choose to leave and escape the hostile environment, Jane Pittman decides to stay and make a difference for herself and Ned, her companion. However, Ned becomes increasingly frustrated with the oppression faced by African Americans and becomes a community organizer. His efforts to assist fellow African Americans in migrating north provoke the anger of local whites. Fearing for his life, Ned moves to Kansas. Meanwhile, Jane forms a common law marriage with Joe Pittman, another plantation worker and they settle on a ranch near the Texas border. After overcoming obstacles orchestrated by Mr. Dye, the plantation owner, Joe excels at training wild horses, but Jane has recurring dreams in which he dies while taming a black stallion. When such a stallion arrives at the ranch, Jane's apprehension overwhelms her, and she releases the horse. Tragically, Joe is killed while trying to recapture it. In the meantime, Ned marries, becomes a teacher, adopts the surname Douglas in honor of abolitionist Frederick Douglas, and fights in the Spanish-American War. In 1899, he returns from the war with his family to settle near Bayonne, Louisiana, where Jane now resides. Known as Professor Douglas, Ned aspires to educate black children and promote Frederick Douglass's views. During a sermon he delivers by the river, urging African Americans to fight for their rights, Ned's rhetoric alarms the white authorities, leading them to hire a Cajun mercenary named Albert Cluveau to assassinate him. After Ned's death, Jane confronts Cluveau, who was once her fishing partner, 
and predicts his own agonizing demise. Book 3, titled The Plantation, sees Jane finding employment on Robert Sampson's plantation. Sampson has a son named T-Bob with his wife, but he also has an older, illegitimate black son named Timmy. T-Bob and Timmy share a brotherly bond, which Samson allows as long as Timmy remains subservient to his white brother. However, their relationship takes a sour turn when the racist overseer, Tom Joe, falsely accuses Timmy of misdeeds. Timmy's defense is perceived as insolence, leading to his expulsion from the plantation. In the 1930s, T. Bob falls in love with Mary Agnes Lafarber, the plantation schoolteacher. Although Mary is Creole, her light skin allows her to pass as white. T. Bob proposes to her, but she declines, believing that their mixed-race union would be condemned by society. Devastated by the rejection, T. Bob takes his own life. When Robert blames Mary for his son's death, his friend Jules Raynard shifts the responsibility onto racist belief systems. Book IV, titled The Quarters, follows Jane and a group of women on Samson's plantation as they collectively care for an orphaned boy named Jimmy Aaron. They believe he may be the chosen one, the savior who will free them from oppression. As Jimmy grows up, he becomes a civil rights activist. After attending school in New Orleans, he returns to Bayonne in the early 1960s to orchestrate the arrest of a mixed-race girl for drinking from a white fountain. This arrest prompts him to organize a protest, and Jane, now over 100 years old, intends to participate. As Jane sets out for the protest, Robert Sampson appears and informs her that Jimmy has been killed. Undeterred, Jane leads her people past Samson and continues their march against injustice. 